hello friends welcome to my channel so in this video we will learn how to use python to make website in just five minutes yes you heard correct it's just five minutes so with some uh with some framework we we should be able to build a website quickly in five minutes so the reason behind making this video is when we will be going through the machine and deep learning projects we need to host those projects on the website so this video will help you to understand how to make the website and once you have the website ready you can deploy your machine and deep learning projects on this website so that you can make it useful for anyone who wants to use those projects so <clears throat> let's get started So let's start with how the website works. So we will use as a vinayailab.com as an example. Uh, so let's say you decided to visit the Vinay AI Lab website by typing that in the URL HTTPS or HTTP and then slash slash www.vinayailab.com or simply just put like vinayailab.com in your web browser. So what happens after that is through the internet connection, so your browser initiate a connection to the web server by first converting the, the domain name. So the domain name is Vinay Lab into an IP address. So each of these domain names have an IP address. So that so so basically it converts that into the IP address and then through there is a called domain name services, DNS services they call it. And then that gives the location where exactly these IP address is being hosted and all the files are being stored there so the so basically it it sends you to the web server so that web server stores all the necessary files to display the the pages of the website on your computer so typically all the uh, pages that is basically the, the HTML the JavaScript and the CSS uh, so all these pages are being hosted there so that web server actually uh, send that back to the browser. So what happens is, so basically, if, if we summarize it, so once the contact is being made uh, between the, the web server and, and the client, so what happens is the browser, the browser requests the data from the web server using HTTP or HTTPS. So HTTPS is a secure layer, and then the server delivers back all these data to the browser, so those HTML pages and other pages and then the browser converts them into the format that is easily that is displayed on the web browser so typically a web server stores and delivers the content for a website uh, and it, it helps to make a communication between the web browser and the web server uh, using a, a HTTP protocol so if, if you might have heard about like when you uh, building a website or already build a website you heard about the web hosting so web hosting is basically a space that we purchase on a web server to store those files so let's break it down like what are the different files are being stored so we will make it pretty simple we will just talk about html css and javascript for for a simple website you just require these three pieces and if your website is dynamic then you in javascript so HTML is basically they call it uh, it stands for hypertext markup language so it's the code of every page so essentially it declares what you are going to see on the page and it appears in a series of tag like a div tag a tag body template title and so it describes the element type attribute what all different contents are there and the second piece is the CSS so that's called cascading style sheets uh, and we specify the style of HTML so affecting like what are the size color position animation of uh, the text that appear in the HTML and the last piece is the JavaScript so JavaScript basically manipulate the HTML element and create dynamic functionality within a web page so in short the HTML provides the structure of the page CSS provides the styling for a page and then JavaScript provides the behavior of a page so how the python is playing a role in this so uh, because as we are learning the python so python 
has an HTTP libraries that allows you to create HTTP servers. And here we are talking about Flask and Django server. So Flask and Django are two powerful web framework designed for web application development. So it consists of implementation of common functionality of web application, which includes like web servers, web services, web APIs, web resources. And both Django and Flask are free and open source. Each one have their own advantage and a disadvantage. The choice of framework would really based on what are you planning to develop. So for heavy application, we use Django framework as it supports lots of functionality. And if your application is lightweight, so we go for Flask framework. So if you are a Python developer and about to start, I recommend using a Flask framework uh, for simple applications uh, because as it grabs the basics of Python development and then moving forward when your project is more complex then you can transfer to the Django framework uh, because it has lots of other functionality that Flask doesn't support. Okay so I'm assuming now you get some better understanding how the website work so let's do some actual action so uh, if, let's start creating the website using Flask so I'll be using PyCharm IDE for this, very strong library, very strong IDE for writing the Python code. I already made a lot of videos on PyCharm, so please visit the channel for how the PyCharm work. And the good part is uh, it, it comes with like when, when you create a new project. So I'll start with creating a new project. So I'll say, let's say first. website so you see it creates a virtual environment when i create the website when i'm using any other uh, id or the uh, the tools uh, the developer tools you need to set up a virtual environment as well but here it comes with setting up the virtual environment as soon as you create a website so virtual environment basically helps uh, that you have your own world of packages for this specific project so you're not touching the other uh, packages that are installed on your machine so it's only specific to this specific project okay so now you can see a new project is being created so if we want to check what all different packages exist in this particular project we can go to PyCharm preferences and then project so python interpreted so it, it has a pip tool setup tools and we also pip uh, so we can install either by going to the terminal here and then uh, we can go for the pip install flask or we can do directly from here so pip basically is a package management system uh, in in python so it is used to install software packages so it it basically connects you to the online repository of public packages called python packages uh, index so, uh, but we can do it directly from Python interpreter here as well. So I can go and search for Flask. So the first one, so I can just go and click install. So it doesn't take much time. Okay, pretty fast. So now it is installed, so I can close this. Okay, so now the uh, the Flask is being installed in this project. So uh, when, when I start writing any of the code, I for like any new library or the package i usually go and read the documentation so i get some enough information about it so i prefer following uh, you following the same approach to you as well so that you get a better understanding of that package or the framework or or any of the library you're using so so you can go to flaskpalettesprojects.com so this is the one that has the whole complete documentation about the flask so let's go to quick start and then so in order to use the flask here is a sample code so from flask import so let's copy this and then uh, let's go to our pycharm so here i will be creating a project uh, the python file here so i'll name this as web server okay and i will just copy paste it so so let's go through a few lines here uh, so basically underscore name is what this is saying is it's a main file so if i need to check this so what i can do is i can just go and print this print 
underscore underscore name and then run just to run this so yeah so it's saying it's it's a main file so whenever we want to run it it goes and check for the main file so let's close this out and then so this line what it is saying is app dot root directory so it's saying anytime you reach to the root directory run the below code so basically there is nothing after so it's saying it's a root directory in order to run the flask we have to run export flask app and the python file name so let's go here and replace hello with web server okay perfect now we have to see give flask run okay so now you can see uh, it it is showing us an ip address where it's running so it's a local host it's running in our laptop so let's copy this and then what we can do is we can see what it is showing so let's wonderful so now you can see that uh, uh, the the website is running in our local host and uh, it's showing what we have entered here in the root directory so we can inspect this page as well so in order to do that in the chrome browser you just go and inspect and see what all different files are coming from the web server so what it's happening here is as i explained so browser is making call to the web server and web server is giving us the response so we have to go into the network and uh, let's refresh this again so you can see that uh, there is a document that is coming and then the response is hello world uh, so and this is the preview of the response and if we go to the element so the the beautiful uh, part with flask, flask is it's actually converting this uh, into html by itself we don't need to do that conversion so you can see the whole html is generated even though we haven't defined that in the uh, in our file so let's make some small changes also here okay so now let's make a change here so let's say if i do here is hello AI lab and save it so when we go back here and then refresh this it is not making that change so the reason behind is it's not running in the developer mode so we have to change that in the developer mode so let's see in the documentation so uh, let's see in the debug mode yes okay so let's go into the debug mode and it says that to enable the development feature set the flask environment as development so let's copy this and then see if that make a quick change here so what we have to do is first of all for coming out of it from you have to press ctrl and c okay now let's clear this out and then we say development okay and then we say flask run perfect so now you say the debug mode is on and it is again running on the same localhost server so let's refresh it okay awesome so now it's a real-time change so let's do one more test so say ai and ml lab and uh, let me save that as soon as i save you can see it detected the change and it restart and then let's go back here and refresh this awesome so now it's a real-time change so that way you can make a quick change you don't need to rerun the server again and again so as this video is becoming a little longer so i thought of splitting this video into two parts in the second part we will be creating html css and javascript file and also we will learn how to send these files to the browser using flask also there will be some interesting topics to learn so in order to watch the video you can go to my channel and 
uh, look for the second part and thanks for watching this video